Hello mate and welcome back to another exciting episode of our character creator series. Now in this episode we're going to take what we achieved in our previous two episodes and we're going to work on achieving both of those things at the same time i.e importing our character and all of their outfit items in the same pass so that we don't have to do it individually for each one. Now the reason that I taught you how to do it individually for each one first is that you might not want to do all of the things at once you might just want to import the clothing items first and then work on the things later so let's get right into this then now as you can see i've already got my character loaded up in das studio and have already got her clothing items and hair added to her so all i need to do now is to grab the uh, das to iclone face key from the das to iclone package which we talked about in the previous episode and i'm just going to drag the duf file onto my character like this it's going to say this, pre this preset contains information for frames beyond the length of a current timeline. We're just going to hit yes to that and then we'll give it a couple of minutes to do that because it's going to apply this animation to our character so that we can export our animation data to there. Okay, so as you can see now that has been applied so we are ready to go there. One piece of advice I would also give you is if you're working with a piece of um, clothing or a piece of anatomy which you don't wish to export. For example, this character has uh, new gens on it, which we don't need for this. And we also don't need the tongue extension because that's not going to be any use to us in Character Creator 4. So we're going to delete those items before we do our export. So now that I have those items removed, what we can do is just like we did before, we're going to go to File and Export. And then once the options come up again, we have to remain with figures, animations, locks and limits, embed textures, merge clothing onto figure skeleton, allow degraded skinning, allow degraded scaling. Make sure that all of our items here have indeed been selected and then we can hit accept. Now, because I've got a character with some clothing on, this might take a few minutes to do. So um, get, don't, don't be surprised if it does take a while, just be prepared for a bit of a wait. So once we've achieved that, we can just close that studio and jump straight back into Character Creator 4. And much like we did in the uh, importing Das Studio characters video, we can now go to Transformer and we can hit CC3 Plus and choose the file that we've just created. And then uh, Character Creator 4 is going to do a little bit of thinking. And then it'll come up with a dialog box. And just like before, we're going to hit the advanced button and then let Character Creator 4 do its thing. And then as you can see, it's going to come up with a list of all of the additional items in there. So we can actually change these to whatever we want to at the initial type. So as we can see, messy bun is not a cloth. That's actually hair. Messy buns bangs is also hair, as is that. Jeans is clothes. We could change that to an accessory or gloves or whatever, but we are happy to leave that as closed. And then that's all good to go. So now we can just hit OK. And then after a couple of moments, Character Creator 4 will present us with our character. And now that it's done its thing, as you can see, our character is loaded into the scene. The clothes already conformed to her. And she's basically, if you don't plan to separate this uh, character and her clothes into separate items is basically ready to go with animating or posing whichever you want to do however in order for us to be able to save these assets individually what we can now do is for example because we've already converted messy bun into a hair icon if we want to uh, just slide this across so that we can actually see which one so let's go with the bun bun first which is the uh, bit at the back then we've got the bangs and then we've got the scalp so what we can do is actually go back into our content into our custom content we can select hair we can actually select a hair element and now we can save and we can call this messy bun part one for example and then we can just hit okay that's gonna have a bit of a think for a moment 
and then that will save that as an asset that we can then apply to another character if we should so choose. And lo and behold, that has now completed. So now we can come back to our scene and we can select the second of our hair objects and just repeat the process once again. So we can just go save and we can just call this Essie Barn Part 2. Let character creator do its thing. And then we'll just repeat that for the other hair element as well. And then because character creator 4 is very clever, and it's already turned our jeans and sweater into clothing items very much like with our hair all we have to do is select the item that we want and we can also double check to see if it's conforming right because as you can see there is actually a little bit of poke through on this mesh just around about the hips so we can actually adjust those things but let's go with the sweater then because there's no poke through on that it's basically ready to go it doesn't require any simulation because it conforms to the figure so we don't have to worry about that. We can just select the sweater, go into our content. And this time we're going to go into our clothes and let's just go with shirts. And then we can save this as um, polo sweater and then hit OK. And again, that's going to have a bit of a think. And then almost immediately that's going to be done. Now we can have a look at these jeans and we can see if we can sort their, out their conformity just to uh, resolve this issue of them clipping through her skin. So we're just going to select the jean shape there. And then what I'm going to do is hit modify. And I'm going to just inspect to make sure there's no other poke through. No, there's a misalignment of the meshes at the bottom of the trousers there. That's just sloppy work by the asset creator but other than that bit of poke through at the front of the hips i'd say it's mostly okay so we can actually just double check the conformity we can hit conform and we can maybe add a bit of loose fitting to it to see if that adjusts our shape and we can also increase the number of iterations maybe increase the size ever so slightly and then we can just do a calculate collision and see what happens and hopefully by just recalculating that, we'll be able to get rid of this poke through at the front of the hip. And if needs be, we can adjust these properties as many times as we wish to get that done before we save it as a clothing item. There you go. So that's actually resolved that issue. So now we can go back to our scene, make sure that we've still got it selected, go into our content, come out of shirts and go into pants. And then we're just gonna save these as um, holy jeans. Hit OK. And then that's that ready to go. So basically, we've now got all of the items that we need uh, saved apart from the character herself. So we can actually come into the scene. Now we can double chip, double click on the name of the character to actually give it a name. We'll just call this um, Julia or something like that. And then we can actually save the character itself as a character preset. So again, we can go into content and you can actually choose characters and then just save this as Julia like that. And then character creator is gonna have a little bit more of a think. And then it's gonna save that for us there as well. So that means that we've now got all of these assets available to choose from in our content library in either character creator four or in uh, iClone eight, so that we can put this character back together in iClone eight if we don't want to export and re-import and so on. Um, so that's cool. And then we can just check to see how she looks when she's animating as well. Another thing that I didn't do in my previous video is talk about springs. So what I'm going to do is with the character created, uh, the character selected there, I can actually go to edit spring. Like so, that's going to have a little bit of a think. And then what I can do is you'll notice that where her nipples might be, there is actually um, a couple of icons there. So if you select one, you can actually see that the, her breasts are actually already active as springs. What that means is that iClone 8 is actually, or Character Creator 4 and iClone 8 are both going to simulate that these breasts actually move a little bit with the character's motion, which I think you'll find is pretty cool because it means you don't have to mess around worrying about soft body physics yourself. Um, 
to a certain extent, iClone and Character Creator 4 have done it automatically for you. So now we can just apply some kind of animation. If I come back into templates, I go to animations and motion plus, we can go to acting female. And we'll just give her a walk animation and see what happens basically. There we go. So now she's got the walk animation. Now if I hit play, you can see that she quite happily walks along. Her clothes stay conformed to her body and pretty much ready to go. So you can play around with the character as much as you want to. Animate, export into iClone, create poses and so on. And then if you've got the IRA render settings or the render package for iClone, then you can just render her out in iRay here. Or you can export her into NVIDIA Omniverse to render it in iRay out of that. So thanks very much for watching that, guys. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.